everyone, it's Kathy, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Kathy's Random Acts of Stampin'. Many of you know I am an independent stamping up demonstrator, and I'm located here in the beautiful state of North Carolina. If you're not currently working with a demonstrator, I would absolutely love the opportunity to earn your business and uh, invite you to be a part of my crafty family. And even if you're um, with someone else, I still welcome you here to my channel for ideas and inspiration and wonderful tutorials, or at least I hope you will think so. Uh, today's card is an oldie but goodie, and it is the card with a gift box. It's that night the cutest thing you've ever seen, and it is so mantle worthy because it will sit up like that, and the box helps it to sit. And now you do need to use the thick uh, cardstock, so I always use the white with this and then decorate it. Now you could try with um, those stamping out cardstocks. A lot of those are very thick, but see how that little box just slides out and it looks like a complicated card, but I'm going to break it down and make it so easy that anybody can make this. And inside our little box, you can fill it with peppermints, or Hershey Kisses, little Reese cups or whatever you would like to give to the recipient. I had some of these peppermints. I keep them on hand all year because I love them. And for me, the peppermint is not just for Christmas. So um, I love I love peppermint. And so many times peppermint will help settle your stomach. When you slide that in, you just got to make sure that you get it past that ribbon. And I may rethink that on the next one I'm making. This was my, my prototype, so the first one I did. Um, I did, I have to admit, I had a little trouble with the box, but I got it figured out, and hopefully I have a, a real easy way to show you. Now, let me show you on the inside of the card. When you take the box off, I also decorated the inside and for the Merry Christmas. There's not a place to sign, but there's ample room on the back. And what I would do is I'd put something decorative either across here uh, or running this way, and then you can write your, sen your sentiment or your note to the um, recipient. So anyway, this is what we're going to be making today. So I'm going to sit this one over to the side. i to get my ribbon and everything in place. Uh, I just love the way this turned out. And when I saw how easy it was, I'd seen these years ago. And I was like, ooh, I don't think I can make one. But I'm here to tell you, I'm going to show you that you can make one because it's not anything that's terribly hard to do. So I have a template. Y'all know I love to give you templates. Now this will be in the PDF tutorial and I'll have everything typed up so it won't be my scribbly handwriting. But what you're gonna need is a card base that let me zoom y'all out just a hair. That's a little bit better. So you're gonna need a card base that is um, eight and a half by five and a half, and I scored it at four and a quarter, just a standard size card. And the card's gonna be landscape, so it's gonna fold from the bottom to the top, and uh, it's gonna be in landscape. You're gonna need some mats, but we'll get to those in just a minute. You're also going to need the elements for your to cut your piece out. And I made a template, and it's nothing but a thick piece of white cardstock that is cut by two, two by four. And I scored it at two to give me that bend. And where you're going to do is you're going to put this on wherever you want it. You want about an inch over on this side. So I measured it about an inch, and then I just drew around it, and I took it to my trimmer, and I cut it out. So simple, so easy to do, and then your box sits right in there. So that's that's the part to make that part. Then to make your box, you just need two pieces: the box, the piece for the box, and your cut your cut lines. We are also going to cut. Oh, hang on a minute. Let me get my pencil working. We're also going to cut here on these these pieces along here as well. But then you're going to angle cut. So I'm just going to scribble that in. I did this a lot neater. I actually took a ruler and did it. But you're going to cut up and then you're going to angle. Just in those centers, you want to leave these outside pieces uh, nice and square. And I'll show you why once we get going. But this is just a six by six. And you're going to score it at two and then turn it, score it at two, turn it, score it at two, turn it, and score it at two. So two inches all the way around. Then your lid is pretty much the same way. It is three and one eighth by three and one eighth, and you're going to score at a half an inch all the way around. And then this one's very simple. You're just going to cut straight up 
on those cut lines on this side, turn it, and do it on that side. That's all there is to our box. So I have my pieces already somewhat cut. Uh, we are going to do a little scoring, um, but I have the mats cut as well. So I know that we will. everybody's going to want to know the size of the mats. Don't worry about trying to write everything down. Let me turn this other light on. That's a little better. Um, don't worry about writing the measurements down because I'll have all that over on my blog. Also, there'll be a free PDF tutorial, and I'll have the diagrams for all these pieces. Make it real easy. You can print that out and keep it or save it to your computer and go back and reference to it whenever you need it. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on the card itself first. So I'm going to move everything else out of my way. And I'm going to bring my scoreboard up. And the first thing I want to do is just go ahead and do my scoring. So I'm going to score this piece. I'm also going to score the other pieces. So I'm going to score this at four and a quarter. Remember, this is our card base. And we will burnish that down in just a minute. But I'm going to lay that over there. Then I'm going to bring in my piece for my box. And this is going to be scored at two turn it score it at two let's make sure it's up in that corner each time turn it score it at two and turn it and score it at two so now you can see you have a grid that looks like a tip tap toe box so you've got three across and three in the center and three diagonal so that's an easy way to make a simple two inch box so I got that done. So the next thing we want to do is the top to our box, which is that piece that's three and one eighth by three and one eighth. And all we want to do with this, and I'm going to use the larger ball on my stylist because I need to score this at uh, a half an inch on all four sides. So let me pull this down a little bit so you can see it. So I'm going in right there at a half an inch and I'm using my thumb to hold that still. And the reason I'm using that, using that ball, the larger ball in, that keeps from tearing your designer series paper. So I'm going to hold it right there and score it a half an inch, turn it a half an inch, and turn it and a half an inch. So that's the piece for our lid. So I think we've got all our scoring done. So now let's um, let's go ahead and I'm gonna show, I want to show you how to cut this out. But before you do that, let's go ahead and score this because you want to make sure you have a really crisp uh, score line on this. And I like to turn it over and do it on both sides. Now this is where this little template and on yours it it will be like this, and it, it will say template two by four score it at two inches. And all this piece is going to do, it's going to sit on your card where that two-inch score line is. It's going to sit right on the score line of your, your card. But I want to make sure that I'm lining it up at one inch from this side. So I'm going to come up. This is where your ruler becomes your best friend. So I'm going to put use my little magnets. You can use a piece of tape or whatever to hold yours down. But I'm going to use those just to kind of hold that in place for me. And I'm going to take a T ruler and I am going to lay that down right there. Whoops, I need to put this one over here. Um, and I want to make sure that this paper is staying on that line right there. Because I know from here to there, and you can't see that. Let me zoom you out a little bit more. Okay, you can see my one inch right there. So I want to make sure that this is over exactly one inch. So I'm going to look at it right here. That needs to come over. And that looks just about perfect. So I'm going to take that off and I'm going to hold this in place. And I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to draw. I'm just going to draw around this template. You want to do it you know, fairly light. You don't need it dark. You just need to know where you need to cut out. And you can just do the corners if you want to. Okay. 
When you raise that up, now you can see exactly where you need to cut that piece out. And that just makes it so easy to be able to take this piece now to your trimmer and lay it in and cut these lines out. And then you'll have another template just like the one. That's what this one was. It came from this card. So it makes it just a really easy way to cut that out. But it's just a two by four inch piece of paper and you score it at two. Card stock preferably because it makes it stronger. All right, so we got that done. So now let's trim this out. So simple to do, just take it to your trimmer, line this up into your trimmer at the one inch mark over on this side, and I'm gonna line it up, and then I'm gonna bring my, um, my cut blade right up here to the top of this piece. And that looks like it's about right there. I'm going to sink my blade in and I'm going to slice down to right there. So I can see right there where my piece, where it ends. And then I'm going to turn it this way. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to line it up. This time I'm going to look in my track for my, my piece. And it looks good. So I'm going to go all the way up to where that little line is and line my line the top of my trimmer. It has a little line right there. And I'm going to line it nice and straight with that line. And now I'm going to slice down to the next line. So simple. Raise it up. Turn it. And now we're going to look through the track. Let's pull that down. And I want to make sure I can see that line all the way down. And I do. So I'm going to come right to this mark. And I'm going to slice up to that one. It, it is a little bit of trimming to do with this. Now, if you have a die uh, that is a two by four rectangle, you could definitely use it uh, and it would make it really super easy. Uh, but if you don't, you would have to worry about, you know, getting it straight on your paper and things like that. But um, you could do it with a die if you have one that's that size. If you don't, you know, you can always do it this way. I wanted to show everybody how to do it manually in case you didn't have a die or you just prefer to do it, you know, manually. So I'm just going to take my paper snips and I'm going to snip this out. In some places it's it comes out really easy, and some places you just have to use your paper snips and snip that out. And there we go. So now here is our piece that our box is going to sit in. So we're coming along. There is the base. So now what we need to do is look at our box. And this is the piece we have to do a little bit of um, work on, I guess you might say. And we're going to, I'm going to use my longer scissors. And remember, you, you want to cut your angles on the middle piece, not your outer pieces. And there's a reason for that. It's to make everything square up. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to crease everything first and get a really good um, burnish on each side and every every score line. Because if you do that, it makes your piece, anytime you're doing a 3D project, it makes it come together so much easier. Okay, so now we're ready to cut. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this score line away. So I'm going to cut on the right-hand side of that score line because we're going to be cutting that out anyway. So I'm going to cut nice and straight right up against that score line all the way up to the next score line. Do you see where I'm going? Just like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side, but this time I'm going to cut to the left of that score line. And just always remember you're cutting of the score line away. Like that. Now we're going to fold these back because we want to we want to angle cut this. And all we want to do is just do a complete angle cut all the way up to this line. And then you've got that little pie shaped piece that falls out. We're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to come in and cut up. Just like that. Now we're going to turn it around and we're going to do that same mechanism or that same procedure right here. 
I'm going to go offline and cut this and then we'll come right back once I get that cut. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. And as you can see, I have um, cut out all my spaces on our box. So now all we have to do is put this together. So turning it over, what you're going to want to do is decide if you want this to be the front of your box or this, because it's going to depend on how you fold your pieces. So I decided I want this to be the front of my box. So I am going to bring my tabs in like this. Bring them up, and then I'm going to fold this in. And then what you want to do is hide the back inside of this. So when you close it over, you have a nice uh, even edge on the front. So that tells me that I'm going to want to put glue here, and then glue that to that, and then put glue here, and glue that to the side. And then that's going to give me a perfect shaped box. And it's going to be nice and sturdy because we have the three pieces cardstock. So let's get started. Let's start with this one. I got a little clump of glue on my glue press. All right, so we know it's going to need to go right here. So let's put, you know, my glue doesn't want to work for me. Let's try this. If you have one of these uh, guns, the glue press, and it gets clogged, all you have to do is put the top back on the bottle, screw it down tight, then unscrew it, and that should open your bottle up. So let's see if that worked for me. There we go. Usually works every time very well. Okay, so I got that glue on there, so I'm going to bring this around, and I just want to make sure everything is square. So you can tell by the side of your box that that's nice and even. And now we're going to put glue on this one. This is where we're going to close everything up right here on the side. And this is where you're going to want to really make sure that everything is squared. I like to lay it down and take my bone folder and go inside and just squish that all down so that you know your box is doing what you want it to do. Now we're going to fold this one in. And if you notice now, we're going to have to open these up because we're going to put glue here first. Because again, let's see, here first because this is the front of our box. And you can tell because you don't have a seam there. You have a seam here in the back. And you will have one over here when we close this down. So let's start with this one. And let's go ahead and put glue on it. And then we're going to close that over on it. Square everything up. Take our bone folder and go in and press really good. Bella is snoring away in the background. <laughs> so there is our box. Now, I, I think I failed to tell you, you can tell by this, this is not a card that you could um, put in the mail because, I mean, let's face it, you could but you would have to put it in a box and mail it and pay the extra postage. This is a great card to give a teacher, um, a co-worker, a neighbor, or anybody that you can hand a card to. And I think it's just stunning the way it works and the fact that you can give a little treat along with the card. So let's go ahead and get some work on our lid now. What we're going to do with our lid first is we're going to go ahead and just fold our pieces. And I'm just going to give it a finger press to start with. What I want to do is establish what the top of my box is. And I want to give this a little trial run on the top of my box. Just to make sure everything is going to work and it looks really good so the only thing we have to do now and i'm going to turn it over to the other side because i think you can see the score lines a little better i am going to take my paper snips this time and i am going to cut nice and straight up to that score line that's a half an inch score line and then i'm going to cut out just a tiny bit of that bulk
something like that. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. And I'm cutting the score line away. That takes the bulk out too if you do that. And just feel for where your score line is and then cut on the side that you're going to actually angle cut on. And that's that will take it out every time. So I'm going to bend that score line so I can see it. I'm going to go up straight. And then I'm going to cut this out like that. Very easy, very simple to do. We're basically doing the same thing we did on the other one, but instead of cutting the, the middle out, we're cutting this part away. So cut straight up. And then do your little angle cut. Like that. And we can get all of that off of our desk. And now we're ready to put this together, but let's score everything first. We got, I mean, not score it, but burnish it down. Give us a nice crisp edges. And anytime you're making a 3D project, it's always important to make sure that you get everything adhered and everything pressed down. So now what you want to do is bring the tabs over like this. And all you're going to do is put a tiny bit of glue on that tab. And go ahead and do both sides. And then all we're going to do is bring up our sides. And we're going to square everything up just like that. And you just want to make sure those edges are nice and even. And this ensures that your box lid is going to fit. Now for this one, let's pull them in like that. Pull this back just a hair. Go ahead and put your glue on your little pieces, your tabs. And then sit it down and bring this up and square everything up. Then we're ready to bring this over and make sure everything fits. And look at that. Perfect fit all the way around. Now for the front of my box, let's find my front. Okay, this is my front. I want to put down a little piece of uh, designer series paper. But I want something different than my lid. So I'm going to look in my, in my papers. And I'm going to look in the same paper that I've been using, and that is the one that's called Joy of Christmas. Here they are. I have my other pieces laying over here. That's for my front of my card. So what I want to do is I want to look for something that I can put on the front of my box that's going to be cute and decorative. I'm wondering if a piece of this would be cute. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to cut a piece of this. Let's see if I got another smaller piece in here. So leave that out and look and see. Sometimes I got pieces that I've dropped in and they kind of fall down to the bottom. See, so I'm just going to check. I don't think I do. So I got a lot of the little red pieces, but not the green red. That would be pretty on that too. But I, I'm going to stay with the plaid theme along with the floral. I think that's pretty together. So we're going to need a piece of this cut to one and three fourths by one and three fourths. So one and three fourths right there. It is a very tiny piece. By one and three fourths. All right, so these are all of our pieces to decorate. So let's bring our card base and our box.
We're going to take this little piece and we're going to put it right on the box and we're going to even it up. Let's put some glue on it. Then we'll put something else on that, but I think that looks really festive like that. Isn't that cute? So now let's go ahead and get working on our card. And I know that we want this piece, I think, like that to go here. And then we're going to put this piece right here. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere this piece down first. Now, are y'all a fan of your liquid glue, or do you like a tape runner like the stamp and seal? Um, let me know what your favorite is. I tend to go to glue, I would say, 95% of the time. I do like my dimensionals, but I'm talking about you know, like stamp and seal versus your liquid glue. I think I'm going to put that and let it butt right against that. And that's going to give me just what I need. And I need another little strip right here. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. I may do a little red strip there. But I like that. This is going to be real easy to line up because all we got to do is line this to the bottom of that. And that's going to go in there perfectly. So let's go ahead and put glue on it. Put this glue down right here. I'm going to press that or kind of iron it out. Now I need to decide what I want up there on the top. And I'm wondering if I want to do another little strip of this. Or do I want to do a little strip of red? Hmm. Or do I want? <laughs> Y'all know how indecisive I am. Do I want to do a little piece of this? I think I like that. I think I'm going to do this, and you know what? I'm not even going to measure. I'm just going to fold that back and snip it off with my scissors and call it a day. Oh, and when I was doing my box, you noticed I used my long scissors. Anytime I have to cut um, a, a straight up more than an inch or two, I find that I like using my long scissors. It really helps me get um, everything just like I want it. Yeah, I think I like that. So we're going to glue this down. And I went ahead and butted that down to that. And it gave me enough to make this look just like I wanted it. So the next thing I need to do is I need to make a tag or some type of um, label to go right here. So I'm going to go into my, see my label guys and let's see what we can find. Something fancy is a great one to go to. And if we didn't want to do a tag and we just wanted to do something like this, we could actually layer this. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to cut this one in red. And I'm going to cut this one in white. And I'm going to go offline and die cut these and I'll be right back. All right, I have my pieces uh, die cut and I also used my uh, double oval punch and punched out a piece of real red and a piece of white. The larger one with the scalloped edge in red the smaller one in white. And I found the stamp in the sending cheer. In fact, all my sentiments I'm using from my holly leaves are coming from uh, sending cheer. Love that stamp set. So let's see what we got going on here. So what I did is I kind of laid this out like I want it. I'm going to take those leaves off because I'm not stamping those right now. I want to stamp this in real red. 
So I'm just going to make sure that I've got everything lined up like I want it. The main thing is that I'm getting my berries not where I want them. And I think right there is good. So I'm going to pull that off. This needs to come over just a hair. I'm going to grab a stamp block. And I'm just going to go in and pick that up just like that. And grab my little red. And we are going to ink this up. Stamp it to the bottom. Beautiful. Now I'm going to grab my faded spruce. Or my holly leaf. Again, I'm going to need a small block. And I'm going to light this up. And ink it up. And then we're going to come in right to that point. And stamp those leaves. How pretty. So one other thing we want to do is open me and I'm going to do that in the green as well. And this is a tiny little stamp so I'm going to use the, the smallest stamping up uh, stamp for that and we're going to stamp it on that little oval from the punch and it just says open me. I love that. Yeah. The great thing is I got all the sentiments and all of my stamping out of one stamp set. The Sending Cheer is really one that you're going to want to pick up. And make sure you get the dies too, because you're going to want them all. So now all we have to do is put this on here. And I do want to pop this up. So I'm going to put dimensionals on the back. Let's see. I still have some on this card. So let's go ahead and peel the read. I'm going to put six on it. Just to give it a good um, adhesion. I want to make sure it doesn't fall apart. One, two, three, four. I really love coloring the backs of the dimensionals because it really does give you the opportunity to um, see that you've got the backers off. So I'm going to set that down right about here. That's pretty. You know, we're going to put this on kind of at an angle, something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put glue on the back of it. And then I'm going to set it down about like that, give it a press. And then I'm going to put dimension on the back of this one. And I think for this one, we'll only need a couple. And then we're going to put this down. That on top of this. That's so nice and straight. Sometimes when I'm doing pieces like this, it helps me if I hold them up like this in front of me. I seem like I can get them centered up a little bit better. And now we're going to just put glue right in the middle of this. And we're going to stick that down on our box.
That way they know that there's something in that box for them. I love that. All right, the only other thing I want to do is I want to put a little bow up on the top of this. I think it's going to look so cute with something very festive up there. And I'm going to grab this. This is still in the online store. At least it was the last time I checked. And this is that, um, it is called Glitter Organy Ribbon. And it is white and it's beautiful. It's got little glimmers in it and it picks up whatever color it's against. I love this ribbon. So I'm going to make a little bag. I'm going to pull that off of my finger. Yes. Like the tail down. I do want to cut this one just a hair. Like that. And then I think I'm going to put this right up here at the top like that. I think it's beautiful. So again, I'm going to use a glue dot, one of our mini glue dots, to put this down with. So I'm going to pull it off using my take your pick. And I'm going to put it down right about there. And then I'm just going to stick my beautiful bow into it. Like that. So now for the box, if you want to, you can decorate it. I put ribbon on the last one and I didn't like the way it worked. If you wanted to do something um, a little festive, you could cut some strips. And let's, let's try that. Let's try cutting some strips of I just had a little piece of white. I think I used it for that. I was just looking to see if I had. I think I'll use this piece. So let's see if we can make some little, like a makeshift bow. I'm going to move my stamps up here out of my way. And let's grab our trimmer. And all we're going to do is cut some quarter inch strips. And I'm going to cut about four. If you wonder why I'm doing that, my hands are cramping up again. We still have not figured out what's causing that, but it's been really bad lately. I'm going to cut one more just for good measure. It's really bad to have shakiness and to have uh, spasms in your hands when you do videos like this. So y'all keep me in your prayers because it definitely has not been easy. But I am hoping that... As time goes on, they are going to find out what's going on, and I will be whole. And I know if the doctors don't, I know Jesus will. So what I'm going to do on this one is I am going to put a tiny bit of glue right inside of here. Just a smidge. Just enough to catch my little strip. Just like that. And then I'm going to fold that down. And I'm going to run a bead of glue. You notice how I've bent it right there. So I know that that takes it to the bottom of my box. And I'm going to just glue it down. I'm going to cut this into the bottom. Right about here. 
And I'm going to avoid it under, underneath this. And then I'm going to do the same thing, or what I might do is take another strip and just butt it up to that one. Yep, that's going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue on this strip and on this one. And let's put that up to there, making sure that you press it as you go. Like so, and then I'm going to cut this off right about here. And fold that over just like that. So I like to get rid of see how everything fits. That works wonders. So now we need to do the little lid. So we're going to do the same thing with that. We're going to go up to the middle. I think I want to put this on to see exactly where I need it to start at. And I need it to start right about there. And it still work. Then fold it up and over. And then over. Then we're going to go back under. But I'm going to go ahead and snip them up so now I can put glue on the whole thing and know that everything's going to get glued. So bringing it back out like that, I'm going to go ahead and put a bead of glue all the way down. And we're just going to fold everything over, pressing it as we go. Now, I know I have a paper bow that I can cut out. So let me look for that dial, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. And I went through my dies and also the catalog to see if I had a large paper bow. I do not. So um, I saw someone use one the other day, but I think it was from an older stamp set or stamp and die. I'm not sure. Or stamp and punch, I should say. But anyway, since I don't, and it's not anything current in the catalog, I am going to decorate this box with a bow like we put on the card. I think that would be cute. It will also be white, and I think it's going to look really cute. I'm wondering if I need to come across this with white. I don't know that I do, but let's, let's look at it and see what it would look like. And then we can put that on like this. Oh, that looks good. That looks fine. That's not straight, but it's okay. So I'm going to do another one of my little bows, but this time I'll make it a single. So I'm not going to loop it on my fingers, but one time. And I'm going to come down and cut a piece of that ribbon. And we're going to come under. I've got two loops on that finger. Let's see. Let's bring that down a little bit like that and bring that through here. What you want to do when you do these bows is hold your ribbon across your hand and hold that with your thumb and go over and then under your index and then over and under your 
um, middle finger and then just tuck this down into that little V and bring it back around. And then you're going to tuck this up underneath that piece that's laying crossways. So pull that in and then get your bow back the size you want it before you start rocking. And then all you're going to do is rock this. And you want to close it up to this being to the back. And when you take it off, you've got a cute little bow. It's going to look so cute on our package. And for this, I'm going to cut it kind of short. And then we're going to put that down right there with the glue dot. Grab my glue dots. We're going to peel back. And this time we're going to stick the bow right to the glue dot. Put that right on the dot on the box. The only thing we got left to do, we need to do our inside. So let's go ahead and cut our pieces for the insides. We're going to open this. And I think I want the green to go right about here. I'll do a piece of red all the way down that side. So this is where our trusty little ruler comes in handy. So I'm going to measure from here to here is four and a quarter. So I need it to be four inches by two and a quarter. So four inches by two and a quarter. So I'm going to do my two and a quarter this way. And I'm going to do my four inches this way. All right, that's that panel. And then this one, just the ruler. And three fourths by two and a quarter. Two and three fourths by two and a quarter. So now this piece should fit perfectly beside that one. So I want to cut some white mats, but I'm not going to do that yet. I may do a tag. So let's go ahead and get this adhered in. And This piece. All right, so the same thing, I'm going to put glue on the back of this. Mm -hmm. Now we need some white. And I think for this one, I'm going to put a white strip across the bottom. So I know that I want it to be, what that's going to do is going to kind of cover up the workings between the red. Let's see if we've got a, a tag that we can use. What is the um, nest of essentials? This would be really pretty across here, I think. So we're going to die cut this. I think we're going to stamp a really pretty Merry Christmas. So I'm going to find a sentiment. I wonder if Christmas magic is in the air would work. Well, that would be pretty. Let's, let's do that. Let's go ahead and cut this and we'll come back 
and do that. And I'm just going to bring up my little mini for this. I hope y'all don't know my video it's being running over a little bit more than what I would like for them to be. But you know, when you're doing a card like this, it's hard to trim this down into a short video because I want you to see the, all the steps I'm going to take in that. That's so pretty and it's stitched. I love it. These nested essentials are such a great die set to have. I hope they keep these around for another catalog run because these are in the annual catalog. All right, and the stamp set that we're doing this from is from the Shop the Town. And I want to do something with this too. So, <laughs> uh, so many stamp sets in so little time. So I'm going to put that right about there. And I'm going to pick it up. And I think I want to do it in red. I want to do it in red, or I want to do it. Yeah, let's let's go real red. You can decorate the inside of your card however you see fit. That's what I always say. Remember, it's your card. Love it. Right, so we have our inside just about done. So I am going to put this down right about like that. And since this card's going to be open, I'm going to use some Stampin' Dimensionals on the back. And then just pop this in just like this. If you want to put something else up here, you, can, you most certainly could, but I'm not. I'm going to stop with the card just like this. We're going to pop in our little gift box. And don't forget to put your treat in your box. Once you get your box in, then you can open your card. Like that, your little gift box sits right in there. And isn't that a cute, cute card? I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that this card would be something that you would like to make. I'll zoom y'all in just a little bit so you can see this card, this box needs to go all the way down to the bottom, just like that. And what a mental worthy card this is. So cute. I hope y'all loved it. I hope this is something that you would make. And if you do, leave me a comment and let me know. Or better yet, if you make this card, go over and post it on our Facebook group. Uh, look for, um, just type in the search bar, uh, Kathy's Random Acts of Stampin', and it will pop up. And it's the one with the big K and a blue um, logo. You'll know you're on the right page. Request to join. And you will be approved just like that. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys, for watching. God bless and keep you. And as I always say in closing, let everything that you do and say bring glory to our Father in heaven. He is worthy. So until next time, bless and keep you. Bye-bye.